and then um, I'm going to boost it later because it's um, one of those things. Let's see when I'm on. I'll let you know when it's live. Here we go. We're live. Hi, guys. This is How? So <laughs> it's like our private consult, but now in front of all these people. <laughs> I'm so excited. And then oh, and then I got so disappointed because I've got the times wrong. <laughs> no, I am. Um, I read your mind. Was it my intuition at the last minute that I realized, or was it just that I knew I'd probably given you the wrong time or me the wrong, I don't know who I gave the wrong time to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if time, I don't know if that's intuition. I think that's just mucking up your time. <laughs> mucking up my calendar. <laughs> oh, wow. Hi guys. So quickly, um, do a quick intro introduction to yourself. And then I'm just going to kick it off because this is all about, um, you being um, us talking about intuition and in, in terms of where you are today, obviously, is, is you learning about your own intuition. So I'd love um, for everyone to know a little bit more about you. And then we're just going to kick off with actually what is intuition? Okay. Um, so I am, my background is in media. I'm a broadcaster um, and a writer, which I never really thought I would say, because uh, I always thought or you know had struggled with dyslexia <laughs> over the years so it's so interesting the story of how I um, have always had a passion for creating content and telling stories particularly based around um, making women feel empowered about themselves and so that played out in a more kind of traditional commercial media field for a long time um, I am the creator and founder of a show that a lot of people listen to and got a lot of access to information about women's health and how to follow your own gut and how to find a way for you to be a chick in this very, very mm -hmm. um, uh, over-stimulated being told how to be a woman world, which is, was called The Thinker Girls, which I'm very proud of. And then, um, and then things changed a couple of years ago. I knew something wasn't really right. I was having burnout. My body was telling me that potentially the build to this particular uh, piece of content had really taken its toll on me. I think it was even a session with you, Naomi, where we kind of really looked at my body and how I physically had really reacted to a lot of the goals and ambitions that I had set for mm -hmm. myself. And so I had a burnout, adrenal fatigue, um, ended up in hospital with, you know, symptoms of endometriosis. And so there were lots of different ways that I was really brought in to have to listen to myself from a very aggressive way physically in some ways. And I started after I left um, my radio show, I started to have a think about how I was better able to communicate with myself internally and not wait for these really aggressive messages coming from either external factors or my physicality. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to dive into that work deeper. Now I've studied and done all kinds of modalities and alternative therapies for my own self over the past 15 years and never really thought about sharing it in a teaching perspective or a coaching perspective. I felt very imposter syndrome with it. So it took me a little while before I stepped into a bit more of a um, authoritarian place or at least a bit more of a... Um, confident place let's say not authoritarian it's a bit that's a bit full <laughs> a bit trump like isn't it that, that, <laughs> but i i felt like i had, was getting more power in my story it wasn't just about ah i don't know what i'm doing i'm going to share this vulnerable part of my life i really felt like i got into my 30s and moved into a place after the thinker girls which needed to move into a, i have things to share and there are there are things now that i know for sure like oprah says things I know for sure. And so um, I kind of channeled that into a couple of online courses. The first one was a single Pringles values course, which essentially is what my book next year will be based on. And it's talking about the difference between types and values and how to figure out, you know, where you're dating right, where you're dating wrong and, and how you're able to really harness who you are first before you start thinking about who you want to attract. And one of the biggest questions I got from that course was, how do I know? Mm. How do I know if it's right or wrong? How do I know if I'm not being myself or he's not for me? And I would come back to, well, you need to follow your gut. You need to, you need to follow your intuition. And then people would say, yeah, but how? 
So I deep dived into this. I deep dived into the processes that I had taught myself that had worked for me over many different years of energy healings and appointments with naturopaths and yoga and breath work and tantra. And I put together my own idea of how you could best access your inner friend is what I call it, your inner voice. Um, And then put an online workshop on my website. And then from there, took my own advice started to access my intuition a little bit further and then started my coaching business this year and then do I will do my first um my first talk and live workshop next month so that's kind of a real short um it's probably long but short I guess snapshot at how how I was forced to follow my intuition then how I was also from external factors forced to listen to it in my own life and then how I've activated it for my life Mm -hmm. or others so it's kind of all very intertwined gosh there's so much there because you talk about the intuition and actually it's more than what we think it is it's from what you've just said it's about you know actually who are we who are we is part of that question what are we doing what is what are we meant to do so it's 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 not just those little signs and, and and feelings it seems like it's a bigger picture Um, be whatever you want it to be the thing about intuition is it is your internal dialogue that is here to guide you through life so if you want that to help you with whether you write a text back to a guy or whether you figure out what you want for dinner or whether you want to be led by that through what should I do for my career what uni course should I study should I get out of this shitty marriage you know it can be as small or big as you wish but I will tell you when you're not following it there's a good chance that you're adding more time to your life unhappily you're not essentially living your truth and you also um, are not going to be as nourished in this life experience that you can be and that's from the food you choose or the marriage you're in you know it could be completely different um, I guess scales so it really is there for you at any time with any decision it just depends on how much you want to talk to it. Um, I've just I've thought of a question, but I'll ask you that in a minute. It just came up just then. But so in terms of you, what when you started noticing your own intuition and following it, what were some of the changes you started to notice first? I mean, are they just small changes that maybe you weren't in tune with? So if people start to follow their intuition, what what are kind of the little things they might start to notice? And what did you notice? I noticed an, a vast and immediate improvement in my anxiety. Now, I don't want to talk about anxiety, depression, like it's something that's really simple to be solved. So when I talk about my anxiety, I'm going to talk about it from my level of anxiety, from what I have suffered through my life. But I understand there's different levels of this. Mm. Okay? So I'm not going to throw it out there that all anxiety can be you know, solved by these easy steps. That's not what I'm saying. But my experience was that my anxiety did vastly improve because I often think that we lose, um, I suppose, the power in these types of physical signs, whether it's anxiety or, um, you know, gut problems or whatever it is. We're losing the physicality um, in focusing on medicine and fixing things rather than seeing what the message is deeper. And so when we go deeper and we think about, Uh, following our gut and trying to find truth or trying to find purpose or trying to find honesty within ourselves, then these physicality elements of our life seem to kind of drop off because my belief system is, is that they're there for signs for us to come back with it. I'm studying a lot about birth at the moment because I am very pregnant and it's often, you know, the, the real thing that's interested me, very similar to this focus is that surges or contractions or pain whichever you want to what do you want to call it are really just signs for you to keep going within keep going within Mm -hmm. your baby keep going within keep going within and I think it's so like that in life with so much of our physicality is that we have these things happen with our body and we kind of get a quick fix to fix it or not even quick we try and find all these ways externally to try and fix when a lot of the time if you're going within and having an honest conversation with yourself and you learn how to do that um 
for me, it started to vastly improve those things. So I had tightness in my chest. I was burnt out. I would have diarrhea on days that I would have really severe anxiety. I would be close to tears. Um, you know, the last couple of years, I've also suffered back from panic attacks the same way I did when I was a kid. And I've really approached them very differently. What are you trying to tell me? Where am I, where am I, where am I ignoring or where am I missing the message? And by having that as a conversation around my intuition or around my inner conversation has really changed um, a lot around how I feel in my body as well as, as my heart and, you know, and my, and my kind of spirit. Right. So in a sense, so when you, when you notice that you are following your, intuition and you're being guided does that mean that you kind of you feel it you feel it in the body as in 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 a relaxation somewhere or a sensation somewhere some people do I feel at peace so if I'm anxious um everybody has a different way of feeling anxious most of us do have forms of anxiety at some point everyone says oh I'm not an anxious person Eh, well you probably just don't know the symptom everyone has a fight or flight radar and there's some you know there's things that happen in your body that remind you that maybe you're not feeling so at at one with yourself or calm and mine was always a constant tight chest really upper Mm. like tight upper back um to the point where all night when i when i calm down and start to breathe in my sleep i can crack my back because it's like releasing all the tension i've had all day i would also get an awful cough that would end up playing up there'd be lots of things around my chest area and my voice um which is ironic since i you got the dry cough I remember that you had that little dry cough with a lot which a lot of women do they have this kind of dry cough that just lingers and lingers and lingers and so um that would go just right. go. um and not immediately you know how long I had the cough for like almost a year yeah, but long time. I had a miscarriage I was grieving I was trying for a baby there were lots of things going on to cause my anxiety to flare up so um, my point is it's not necessarily one meditation. You start to ask your intuition, hey, what's up? And then it goes. But it is an awareness around where you are at, at that point of your life and that potentially the awareness is what will get you out of there. Got it, yes. And one of the things that I was looking at, which I found quite fascinating when I knew I was going to be talking to you about this, I wanted to tie it in with hormones and try and see, you know, where does it, where does it sit with the whole hormone balance stress? And what I realized, and and when I was looking in a little bit deeper is with, with intuition, what they've noticed in science is it does light up when your when your intuition is going all those kind of aha moments, it does light up the prefrontal cortex. And so we know that daily stressors like just life being busy, being in traffic jam, being on social media the whole time, tends to overwhelm our prefrontal cortex so this this must be what makes it so hard for us to channel that intuition the fact that we're being bombarded with things all the time and so it kind of mixes the messages up I suppose and we don't know what's what 100% and I believe that that's why things like meditation and really checking in with yourself on a daily basis Mm -hmm. isn't going to become any more this idea of you becoming um, I suppose in in hold of your inner power or or going to figure out how you can attract things I think we're going to have to use those tools to survive because the way the world yes. is at the moment like I look at it and I think a lot of the time back in the day or when I started to meditate or think about this kind of work I was more using it as a tool so okay I can come back to myself and I can <clears throat> visualize my future I can I can you know use it to daydream and get in line with what feels good and start to really access that energy and then your inner glow starts to turn on and that's the way I used to think about it from an attraction perspective now I think it's not even we're not even getting to that level of power we have to actually use all of this stuff to clear out the junk of our day and then once we do that then we can go deeper to our inner power. So it's it's not only important, it was always important to be able to live the life we wanted to, but now it is so much more important because the more intense we get into these technology changes with our life, the more crazy the world becomes, the deeper we're going to have to kind of yeah. dig to get back to that inner voice. And, you know, it does scare me sometimes to think about 
where we'll be at 20 years with people not knowing some of these tools. Like I just feel so relieved thinking about my child coming into this life and knowing that mummy and daddy meditate and that's a part of our routine. And it's no longer about being hippies and people that travel to India. It's mandatory for us to be able to live comfortably. Yeah. So um, I think that's why it's it's not just important for you to think about, you know, my workshop goes into thinking about next year and how you can make better decisions for yourself. I actually think it's really important that we do it for our day-to-day -day health now. It's, it's, you know, it's a really different conversation, I guess, than I was having when I started the work. Okay. And so, and so I imagine that, oh, well, I know, I don't imagine, I know that you are busy. <laughs> you have a lot going on. And I also know that you get quite excited about things. And so your mind can be quite busy. So where, where do you start with this? I mean, I, I know so I've got so many clients and when I talk about just that finding the time or meditating, they kind of look at me with saucer eyes and just say, no way, there's no way in the world I can, I'm too busy, I can't concentrate, I can't do that. So, and I imagine half the population is like this, you yeah. know, that just, yeah. yeah. Where, do they, where do they start? So if you're not a meditator, which I think is where this will all build to, yeah. um, but that's okay, you know, it, it's fine. And in the workshop, I do guided meditations to get to this particular feeling that I want you to access so you know how to come back to it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're not going to go through that today. Um, but it, there are a few things that you can do in your day-to-day -to, -day to start to get you to be more present. And it's funny because we do get told to do a lot of this stuff a fair bit. If you're a person that follows kind of Oprah's Super Soul Sunday podcast or you've read Eckhart Tolle's books or, you know, whatever way you've found, I guess, some um, appreciation or information around mindfulness, we do get told to do small things. And I think we're losing or unaware of the power in them and then we don't do them. So I think there's, and I say this to a lot of the coaching clients that I've been working with at the beginning of our sessions, please do not underestimate the activities and the things I'm going to ask you to do over the next couple of months, because you, you may not do it any other time. This is the time you need to give it a go. And if it doesn't change your life, then great. You go on, you do something else. But when you're working with me, don't underestimate how small they feel because you don't know yet. So that's the first thing I'm going to say straight up. They feel and sound small as if that's going to change the, the, the way that I look at my intuition or get present. Bear with me and, and just give it a go. Um, I guess the first thing before I even go into practical tips is really to start to understand that we've, we've really... Um, confused our sense of self with the way that I guess the world tells us we we discover ourselves and so through movies or through I guess lack of education we have an understanding that our personality is built off our thoughts that who we are as people is who we think we are and there's a really a very 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 um, dangerous I guess um, lack of education around that because if we think we are our thoughts we can think all kinds of amazing things but we can also think all kinds of awful things and essentially when you start to do work on finding your intuition and listening to your gut there is no bad thought or bad place that your intuition comes from mm -hmm. And so that's the first thing to know, that if there's anything negative or unhelpful or discouraging that's coming up and you're thinking, is that my intuition? Then I'm telling you now it's not. Your intuition is not built to fuck you up. <laughs> Your intuition is not there. We are not born to fail. We are born to feel and we are born to be sad and and it's not, it's, you know, it's not our fault that negative connotations have been put on those feelings. We are, we are born to go through a lot of different things, but we aren't born to um, feel crap about ourselves. That's not what we're here to do. And that goes for you that's the uh, florist, the teacher, all the criminal that's done awful things. No one is born to feel shit about themselves. So if you're already starting to wonder, how do I know the difference? If something's telling you you've got to feel crap about it, then it's not your intuition because your inner voice has your back all the time it's the one thing in the world that has your back 
your own inner friend, I call it. It has your back. So we need to separate our thoughts as our personality and start to understand the concept that our intuition and our truth is our personality, not our mind. Our mind is the navigator and I guess the director of what we do with our essence, our truth, our, our personality, our real sense of being. Our mind is what, how we kind of access and work that part of ourselves. But we are not that as a person. We are this as a person. So understanding that there's two different factors working in our internal sense of being that isn't necessarily all about physicality or brain. It is about spirit or whatever you want to call it is the first really important step. We are not our thoughts. Our thoughts are not who we are. They are our mind trying to help us activate who we are. And we need to figure out who we are here to then channel our mind to do things for us for what we want to do, not work against us. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. Total sense. So in, in that respect, yeah, that the, the feeling and, and those feelings should be that, that when you're having those positive feelings and the body's feeling positive that you talk about, that's when you kind of know that that's the navigation system for you. And and yes, totally. But don't ignore the fact that there's going to be some things that feel healthy that don't feel comfortable. So this isn't all comfortable. So when you're laying in bed next to a guy or a girl that you know you shouldn't be with, it's not going to feel fabulous, but it's not going to feel like self-loathingly toxic if you think, if you, you kind of feel that you shouldn't be there. There's like a healthy element yeah feeling it's not all going to feel amazing and like you know it's not all going to feel like you're the happiest person you've ever been but there is a difference between following toxic negative energy and following healthy energy that feels uncomfortable yes yes that makes sense we all know the difference but you can label the uncomfortable negative if you want and then you're in big trouble because if you avoid the uncomfortable you're avoiding a lot of your messages Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and growth that makes total sense what about when it feels okay to you but it doesn't feel okay to everybody else in your life this is your intuition playing at its best so what if it feels okay to you but everybody else is telling you something different this and it's hard (laughs) but this is where you are able to shine when you start to really listen to it is that Often it's funny because this is the hardest time, but the easiest time to figure stuff out because Mm -hmm. the hardest is your mind is telling you that uh, Julie and Sarah and Tim are telling you, no, 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 this is not a good idea. Or, you know, mum's telling you this or whatever, but there's something in you that cannot turn it off. So it's hard because your mind is saying, oh no, we need to go with everybody. That's how we're trained. We are a Western community we follow and as women we follow this Mm -hmm. is this is ancestral we have been trained to follow so it is very 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 set in us to follow the pack and it's important to understand that our mind again the navigator the director has learned that stuff and he's going to try and continue to do that to protect us but so that on one front it's quite difficult when that happens on the other front it's very obvious when your intuition's talking to you and everyone's telling you something else, but there's something in you that is telling you to go the other way. And so even though it is difficult to follow that through, sometimes those experiences can be the real key changing points of transformation around us following our gut because if we do choose to follow it even after we've been told a million different things externally and then you see the results and most of the time they're maybe not exactly what you wanted but they're successful all the same then you will have power and confidence to do it again Mm. where you know there's one thing to be able to find your intuition and there's another to then back it And that's difficult. That's two different steps. Um, We're talking about the first step at the moment. But, you know, it is funny at that point when you've got an opportunity there and it it is easy on one front because it is obvious that intuition is at play. If everyone's telling you something else but you're still hanging on to it, 
you got to ask yourself, is this intuition or is this sabotage? But most <laughs> intuition, if you've got sabotage issues, then you need to work on those with the therapist. But, um, but yeah, you've got to ask yourself if it's one of the two. And you know, in your gut, when you start doing this work, it's intuition. So you're knowing that it's there and then following it through, there's a real opportunity for you to break through to a kind of another frequency of you understanding and backing yourself that changes your life when you start to live your life like that. So yeah. two prong approach, hard, bit of it's hard, bit of it's really, really easy too. And then I suppose, yeah, the, the, the more you do it and the more you then can start to trust yourself, it's trusting in those feelings. And then once you trust yourself to move forward, you'll, you'll recognize it next time. The only way that you're able to really expand this work is in action. Mm -hmm. Read the books. You can listen to us talk about it. But I think one of the really misconstructed or I guess missed opportunities with words like vulnerability and courage and intuition are the action element of it. It's all very well for you to preach that you understand it. And it's even all very well for you to say you get it and you know your intuition. But if you're not listening to it and then living your life accordingly, then you just stay stagnant. So a part of all of this process of understanding vulnerability, understanding intuition, understanding courage, understanding risk is actually then putting it into action because without the action, you never move. Okay. Yeah. And this is what you, and in the workshop that you're doing, you're talking, this is what you're talking about. So you're, you're, you'll be taking people through ways to access this, the feeling. And so they can start to recognize the sensation and the feeling in their bodies because it, it does all come back to a feeling and that's what I talk about gratitude you know gratitude you can you can do your gratitude journal and you can say okay I'm grateful for this but there's there's only very few moments where you suddenly sense that it's like for me suddenly I'll get this whole body relaxation which is gratitude that feeling but the interesting Thing is very much similar to the point I was saying earlier that someone said to me you can write you can go on to Kiki K or Taiko and buy your gratitude journal but if you don't feel it it doesn't access anything so the feeling is the action it's exactly the yeah. same with the vulnerability and the intuition part right mm. the activation of change or transformation with your life when you do this work is the action it's not the understanding. They're great steps. And it's really nice that your cousin Lucy gave you that book and you're going to start the new year at Christmas with this gratitude journal and you're going to do it every day, 10 gratitude things. But if you don't feel them, then it's, there's not, you're not actioning it. It's just, you're just kind of aware of it and writing things down. It's a great first step, but it needs to be taken to another level for you to get the full benefits. Okay. And so will this help people with uh, the, the question I got, I got the same question asked in many different ways when I, when I asked to put questions out and it was really, it, it was, this, this is the, this is the one thing that um, a lot of the people were struggling, struggling with. And I suppose this will be answered in the workshop, but if there's any light you can shed now in terms of how do I know the difference between my intuition and other things like an urge or Someone put imagination. Mm. Um, someone put just paranoia. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is an interesting one because in the first yeah. exercise we do in the workshop um, next month is it's kind of accessing your intuition slash daydream meditation. And in order for me to guide you to that feeling, I do take you through a bit of a daydream exercise to get there because it is a really fine line. There's this really lovely magical essence that if you're accessing your inner child or you're sitting in a daydream space, that there is a real innocence and a real energy and feeling that takes over your mind. And that's what we want to access. We want to be able to access uh, energy in your body that isn't driven by your thought, right? But at the same time, we also need to access information that's coming to us as opposed to information that we're creating oh, okay so the key around this is that when we meditate or when we are looking for a sign or something to tell us is this our thought or is this our intuition we need to be mindful that we haven't created it for ourselves and we've given ourselves the space to receive the information 
it will be coming from either your divine self will be coming from God. It will be coming from your gut. It will be coming from the universe, whatever way you want to look at it. You've got to give it space to be delivered to you rather than you creating it and then asking whether that's right. Because your intuition, uh, following your gut, your inner friend is information that's presented to you, not information that you've put out there and then checking to see whether it works. Okay. Does that make sense? And yes. that's, look, sometimes it can be, sure. I mean, I go into meditation and say, should I do this? Like I ask questions and then I, but the, the key is creating the space to have information delivered to you, not be going, is it A, is it B, is it C? And giving all of the answers and then, and then kind of feeling confused and going, well, intuition, can you choose one? Is it A, B, C or all of the above? And you need, you can ask questions, but you've got to give it the space to be able to deliver information to you without you necessarily guiding it or controlling it or fantasizing the outcomes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's all about that. Sorry to interrupt, but how you do that is meditation, breath, mindfulness, you know, practicing present, uh, making sure that you are in nature. All those things that I spoke about earlier that people roll their eyes and say, what's that going to do? They're the ways you create the space to give you an ability to receive the information. If you don't have space to receive, then you're going to conjure the idea in your head and feel very confused whether it's thought or intuition. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And so it's about creating that space. And I suppose that's why people people say, oh, I'm in the shower. When I'm in the shower, I, I solve a problem or I have a thought about something because you just got those couple of minutes. And I know that um, sometimes, I know that I can sometimes come up with these amazing aha moments and, but I have to have had that kind of that that space of not being on social media and not watching something or not, you know, not not being bombarded by things and having that kind of aha. And I suppose that's a little bit of a intuitive moment when they happen. Yeah, because you've given you've got to look at this in a friend. And this is what I talk about a lot in the workshop and how I first discovered is that it's like talking over a friend. You want advice from this inner friend coming at you but you're talking over it all the time or your, your, your music is too loud or this, like, for example, social media is a way of talking over this inner friend. If you don't, it's, it's, it's not timid, but it's sensitive. It's delicate. It's angelic. It's spiritual. There's mm. something about this part of ourselves that we need to see as sacred. It's not going to scream at you, you know, on the exact time you need to push through your life. You need to protect it just like you would with a child or a friend. You need to harness it. It's a treasure. And if you don't, then you will you will hear from it in different ways that won't be nice. Like you will get sick. There'll be something that will happen to your car and you won't have the money to pay for it. You will get evicted. You, there'll be things that will happen in your life to then have to scream at you when all you needed to do was pay a little bit more attention. Okay. Yeah, the aggressive signs, as you mentioned earlier. Killers. <laughs> you know, it's like the law of attraction with energy and stuff. It's like, oh, so we talk about, okay, let's talk about manifestation. And, and then some of the, you know, some people come back and say, I haven't really been able to think about, you know, what I want to visualize and what I want to do. And I'm like, well, that's okay, but it's happening anyway. You know, <laughs> law, like manif energy doesn't just switch on for when you say, okay, I've done my vision board, now I'm ready. You, you, you can play this game or you don't. It doesn't matter to the way the world works. It's already working for you. So if you're not going to start to harness some of this stuff, that's okay. That's up to you. It doesn't worry me. It doesn't worry Naomi. But it's working in the background. It's happening regardless. So you can yes. either be fucked by it or you can either try and have it work with you. Because at times, if you, if you bury it and bury it and bury it, I, I, I mean, this is just my take, but there's not many people that get out unscathed. Like there will be something that will come up. Some, unfortunately, people much more dramatic and awful than others. You know, my partner is an absolute testament of this. He didn't listen. He didn't, he followed, you know, the crowd his whole life, didn't have much of a voice and ended up very physically sick. He got cancer and has completely changed his life. But he is a big believer in the fact, and Louise Hay talks about this a lot, that disease is dis-ease. Like we're out of ease. We're not listening. So 
Um, I'm not saying if you don't do these things, you will get cancer, but I am saying that signs come through in different ways. Uh, some are more extreme than others. And I don't think that anyone is exclusive or, um, or not going to be affected by the way that the world works like that. Yeah, I think I think that's a huge point because um, I think yeah, I definitely think, you know, all these chronic diseases, there is that huge component of either not following your inner voice or not 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 speaking up or not or, or just or just feeling like you can't you don't have any control. And, and you can see that just can impact health in many different ways. I definitely see it. And I'm really passionate about this work for women because I think we have been given an extra task ahead of us that's different to men of being able to use our voice. Um, and so it's really important that we harness this inner power within us to help us move through that because we have a little bit of an extra hurdle to get through day to day still. Um, and so, you know, even just thinking about going in, I'm a freelancer and I'm doing lots of meetings over the next few weeks with work and what's going on next year. And I have to walk around with this big personal life in on my belly, you know, like there's just so many different ways that we are affected by how everything works. And if we don't have a strong sense of self, you know, it already is hard enough. It's hard enough for dudes, let alone for us who have a lot of extra, I think, uh, complications in particularly Western cultures mm. um, with, with the way that we need to um, flourish. It's interesting because I was thinking about this last night. I was just thinking about when all well, most of my clients are women and when they come in, they I ask, well, you know, do you get sick often? And they say, yeah, I get coughs and colds. And most of them always say, say to me, but my husband, he never gets sick. Well, my partner, he just never gets sick. And last night I was sitting here and I was reading, um, I was reading Christine Northrup's book on how when we suppress our feelings and we don't speak up and we're people pleasers, we're more likely to get sick. And so that got me thinking, so women are more people pleasers say than men. And you just, I wonder that connection between suppressing your inner voice, being a people pleaser. And on the flip side of that, I think my husband fell um, pretty um, kind of, he fell under that a little bit where he was a bit mm. of the helper in his group or his family. So as much as he is a, a man and they're fem, they're kind of from your inner feminine, like it's more, mm. it can happen with men too. And, and that's essentially exactly the same. He had the same, as much as guys, I agree with you, definitely seem to have this. I don't, it just, I just get on with it. Like I, you know, I don't get sick because I think there's so many different emotional or day-to-day -day things that they don't deal with. It's interesting when you use that example. And I thought, yeah, and Ben was a guy that got quite sick because he had those similar symptoms. Like had he those... was the helper in the group. Yeah, yeah. Which is a very feminine kind of thing, which is why a lot more women really um, suffer from that stuff. Interesting. That's for another chat. How do we stop become? How do we stop being people pleasers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So in terms of just what women, what, what everyone watching can do today, it's really about finding the space, finding the space and just giving yourself whatever it is, just, just stillness, just, just time, time in the day, just to start tuning into to feelings and thoughts and daydreaming. I think it's getting out of your head. So, you know, if you can start to practice when you're in traffic, this is a tip that I've given that, again, feels like it's one of those things, but try it and try it maybe every day for five days and then just come and tell me what you think. Don't try it once and then say, oh, that's a load of bullshit. Um, <laughs> give it a go. So uh, once every five days, you might be a person that drives in the car, you might catch transport, whatever it is for you. Um, try and find a leaf that's moving out of the window. So try and look, you can see trees, you, you might be around nature all the time. I live on the beach, so I'm very lucky. But the practice here is to try and find at like essentially a leaf or a part of a tree that's currently alive. So it's moving in the wind. Mm -hmm. So you see it. And sometimes you have to look, if it's a still day, you have to look really hard to see the leaf moving, the leaf, leaf moving. And, um, and the first action is the fact that you're connecting with nature without really needing to do much. The second is that you're concentrating. So you're actually having to look around to see if you can notice it. And then the third is that you do notice it 
And the beauty is so powerful that you're straight out of your head, that you've connected, okay. connected to something. The way that you have a conversation, sometimes you have those epic DMs with a friend and you feel like you're, you know, those Care Bears had the hearts, the colours come out and you to your friend. Aww. It's like there's like a connection with you and nature that isn't just about you noticing nature or going for a walk. It's the same as what I spoke speaking about earlier. It's the action. So notice something in, you know, a leaf that moves and concentrate on that until you need to move on because your light's gone green and try and do that as many times as you remember for five days. That is the beginning of you starting to see the separation of who you are and what your thoughts are. Okay. That's the beginning. So there's a lot of steps that go go on afterwards for you to really start to ask yourself questions and get to a point where you're like, can almost check in and have conversations with yourself. But the very beginning steps is just to start to understand the concept that our mind and who we are are two different things. And when you do that exercise, the mind goes and you're just you. And that's what you need to start getting more familiar with at least understanding that they're separate. Okay. I love that. That's such a beautiful thing to do. Mm, it works too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go and do it. Yeah, it works. And it's awesome because you, oh, I mean, I didn't. I, I saw trees and I would see the beauty in them and I'd see the ocean, I'd see the waves and all the obvious mm. things. To do. But to actually go looking for something and then finding it and seeing how subtle it is, is really beautiful. So, um, again, sounds maybe corny, cliche, hippie, woo-woo, whatever you want to call it, give it a go. Okay, I love that. That's the best bit of advice, just that, just going, trying to, find, looking at the leaf and just seeing the moving movement, and that will help to separate and just... Yeah, and notice who you are in that moment after. Notice who you are. Okay. That, that real essence of nothing, as in no thoughts, is the actual part of who you are. And then over time, you start to see the two separate and they separate more and more and more. And you still have to work at it. It's not a point where I've been doing this for like for 10 years. It's a, it's a job. It's an action. Like I said, there's, there's days where yesterday I set up myself for a 20 minute meditation. My eyes were wide open at 10 minutes. I couldn't, I just couldn't get out of my head. You know, I'm yeah. pregnant. There's lots of things going on. I'm writing a book. Like I'm busy. And like you said, there's a, there's a lot. So it's not always easy and it's not always easy for someone that shares and teaches and practices it every day, but it is a practice and There'll be days where it will be more special than others, but the, the exercise is for you to just see the separation of the two. Yeah, that's a sim that's a that sounds powerful, but it's a really simple exercise. And so if everyone can go away and you said do that for five days, just do it each day, five days, and just just see what you notice. Yes, let me know. Just see what you notice. Um, well, I'm going to see if I'm going to try and come to your workshop because I'm really, 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 I can't, I'm, it's on the, when is it? The 8th of, is it the 8th of December? 8th of December. It's in mm -hmm. Sydney in Double Bay. Um, mm -hmm. we're hoping to maybe get around the country at some point next year. Um, TBC on that because I will have a, a new housemate in my house that will be feeding <laughs> off my breast. So <laughs> see what, um, what they're like and who they are. Um, but yeah, it's the first one and it's the, the pretty much the only live workshop um, and event I'll do before the baby and for a period of time. So yeah, it's in, I'm very, very excited. I'm excited to meet new people because obviously we've had a following, um, a certain kind of following for a while. And then as I've got into this work, it's opened up to do different kinds of people of different interests. So um, I'm excited to see who wants to come and it's a really great way to, I, I guess, set up 2020 because that's a big year and it's um planning we, for the year yeah yeah we learn yeah. about I guess I try and really direct you through a guided meditation to get to the feeling I want you to know mm -hmm. the feeling you're looking for so you have an access point so you go oh I feel that okay that's my intuition like I'm actually going to direct you there but then the second part of the uh workshop is then us using that feeling to figure out what you might want to do in 2020 rather than doing what you think you should do in 2020 
So it's important. Ah. Not only do we access our intuition, but then we start to think about, well, what are you going to do with that in 2020? Yes. Other than yes. I need to buy a house. I must find man. I must do all these things we think. I love that. I'm going to try and come because this is the problem I have because you're always told you should with, with business, with work, you should be doing this. You should be doing this. This is what you should be doing. And this is what everyone keeps saying. True. It's true. And that's mm -hmm. your mind, but your mind is the director. It needs to be directed somewhere. So if you're not going to direct it from your gut, you're going to take direction from external factors, your family, your, the media, like what you were taught when you were a kid mm -hmm. the mind's looking for direction so if you don't listen to your intuition it's going to take direction from somewhere else and that's not living your life that's living someone else's life Boom. So we learn the intuition first and then the second part of the workshop is okay let's get to know them let's get to know her what do we want to do tell us okay Bye. Oh, I'm so, I'm, I'm coming to this. I'm, I cannot wait. And just before we wrap up, I want, I'm interested. I'm just intrigued. Have you noticed any difference being pregnant with your intuition and how, what, what, any changes in that side of things? I think the beautiful thing about intuition is like a, a, a love or a beautiful friend, long-term friendship, um, it evolves into these different layers and different, you know, like a, like a flower or, you know, like a plant that kind of loses its leaves and then reblooms and it happens, it keeps happening and it grows. I think your intuition is like that. Like I really do see it as a relationship you have. It's just that you have it with yourself. Um, and what pregnancy was able to offer me, I think actually more so what my miscarriage was able to offer me was this insane epic backing of it because when you start to so say for example with my first pregnancy which I miscarried I sensed there was something wrong and at this point I was doing intuition work I was teaching you know I, I was really into it but at the same time I'd never been pregnant before it was the most sacred thing that I had ever created and so as much as my intuition was telling me there was something was wrong, I didn't want that to be right. And we go back to that uncomfortable feeling where, you know, healthily wise, I mean, it wasn't healthy, but healthily wise, you know, you're right, but you don't want to be right, you know. So once I realized I was right and we didn't have a heartbeat and then I went through that process, it was heartbreaking and the hardest thing I've ever been through. But my intuition had never ever been I'd never been better friends with myself I'd never ever felt like I could there's I just feel like there's nothing I won't do to back myself now because when you can feel literally life and death in your body before doctors will tell you before anyone will give you an idea of this is the correct yes actually technically you know this doctor says yes okay this is a heartbeat or this is a big machine and we're going to confirm that yes there's something wrong here before all of that you just all of a sudden one day don't feel the same mm. no I don't have any uh, obstetrician background I'm not a doctor and you know there's something not right it's very hard to ignore that part of yourself ever again so that was a very big moment for me and then I've been able to so beautifully follow that power and use that power I got from my miscarriage into this pregnancy so I'm doing a home birth I've you know really tried to watch what I eat but really follow my body the whole way I don't read that many books that I'm not interested in I I really try and intuitively lead my pregnancy um, and I don't know if I'd be able to do that as strongly as I have without what I learned. So it's been a couple of pregnancies to get me where I am. And I think it continues through motherhood because I think you fuck up sometimes and then you <laughs> win sometimes and you realize that I should have listened to my gut that time and not this expert that's telling me something else about my kid. Like I think motherhood is probably one of those things that actually has you be in tune with a version of your intuition because it's your child, you know, so it's like, it's kind of like, I think it's life in practice. Like it's life. Yeah. So it's just, it's actually the greatest way you can activate this part of yourself. Um, and it is also the greatest reward to tell you that 
you really do know what's best for yourself you know that so um so yeah it's changed me in the most epic ways wow wow beautiful yeah that real-time feedback thank you for thank you for this Oh, it's lovely. I I can't. I'm going to book in for the set for the um. It's at the workshop. Yes. Um. And what I'll do is I'll post the information and details here, and I'll send an email out so everybody can find it as well if they're interested in um delving deeper into with you finding intuition. I just think spending a few hours with you and learning a few of these things will be priceless. Oh, thank you, Naomi. And I love we uh, we could talk for three thousand hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do things ourselves next year together more of this i know that's exciting i just love yeah i love your take on it and i just love um your coming you've you you've been i know you've been working on this for a long time you've been you've been you know walking this path for such a long time when i first met you and talking about this and just just coming a long way so i know that you can help a lot of people out there in in terms of tuning into this and other things as well and with massive supporters like yourself like I couldn't possibly share this stuff the way I do if I haven't met as I call you my investigator like I call Naomi my private investigator of the body who will not give up like CSI like she will continue to find the root because that's essentially what we are all here to do is to find the root of the problem heal it and move on and if we don't get to the root then it's you're you're not even beginning you know so um people like yourself have just immensely helped me do what I do and I couldn't possibly have done any of the things I do without meeting people like you and working with you so straight back at you oh beautiful thank you well this was so beautiful chatting to you nice way to start um what yeah. is it Wednesday yeah what is it yeah Wednesday <laughs> Wednesday so I'm going to post everything and let and let everyone know where they can find you and your podcast as well plus the um, workshop that you're doing on the 8th of December fantastic they're going to get so much out of that so thank you so much thanks lovely speak soon bye, bye.